welcome to Orange Country. Well, here we are again in the Orange Country Studios in Hollywood, California. That's right. I've got a new snack. What's your snack? <laughs> You are eating like candy a garbage freak. can. I know I am. That's what I always say. The inside of me is a garbage Jesus, can. I know. I, no, but I'm getting scared because I think that they're getting outlawed. What the gummies? Some of those Haribo snacks. Are, what Haribo? What? I'm telling you, some. I've I've heard a rumor that some of those are getting. They're either going to have to change their formula. Why? Because they've already been they've already been outlawed, like in Japan and stuff. Why? Because it's not good for you. I uh, you need respectfully to respectfully disagree. I can tell you right now what you need to you know what you need to do? You need to trade those hair boost snacks out for some Ozempic. There is zero percent. That makes you feel crappy. This makes me feel great. That's true. I don't great. know if long term that makes you feel great. No, I think it's bad. And I think that this is the reason why everybody has cancer, but also My I cannot is, stop. Is if anything, <laughs> if anything is made in a way that you pull it. And it's like rubber. Wait, like Imagine what it's doing to your. You can wear it as a bracelet. Wear it as an accessory. I don't think that's going to be good in your belly. It's like a candy necklace. I'm going to have to go get my fried chicken tenders. They're so good. They're sour and they have two heads. And they're amazing. All right. And if you want one, they're here. That mixed with your Red Bull. You want one? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I think I eat terribly, but. No, I eat horribly. It's really, it's a problem. I used to be so healthy. Get all those snacks. Disgusting. I know I'm so ashamed of myself. Do your kids like all that stuff? Yes, of course they yeah. do. Mine and too. I'm like bad because like they're my kids are healthy. We believe in balance, right? Yeah. But I definitely believe in like psst, come over here. Really? Here's like a little God, not not me. A little my, late night gummy. My kids want all that candy all the time and I have more fights with them and it's so Well, hard they for don't me. have free will access to it. So well, then you I mean know, my kids will sneak it. My kids know better. I will yeah. kill them. Yeah, no. I'm a New York mom. We don't play. My the, my kids are a little scared of me. I I'm a little worried about that. Sometimes I'll find a rapper and I'll just be like, Oh my god! This oh is like really? And see if you found would it be like in their room? Because for me, the crime is the fact that you ate in your room. Because I don't want bugs. That's uh, the crime. Well, no, I don't. The crime just is that they would feel the need to sneak it because, mm. you know, they it's gotten better. Where they'll mm -hmm. out themselves or or ask yeah. me, but um, or maybe they've gotten better. They're just more they're stealthy it. criminals. They're, yeah, probably. Yeah, I mean that's the route I would take because I don't think that's an abnormal thing. Like you're like it's feels wrong that they would sneak it, but it's like that's the only way they could do it. So uh -huh. you know they're just really you'd have to sneak it if you were my kid. They're smart. I mean, they get treats, but it feels like it's a daily question. Yeah, are we going to get a treat? Are we going to get ice cream? Are we going to get a dessert? So we do nighttime snack every night. Yeah. And oh, I'm glad to hear that because so do we. But, yeah, we do it every night. Yeah. And it used to be more like I would alternate between a treat and You'd then, alternate between Haribo and circus. Then peanuts. like an apple. Yeah, right. No, that's my nighttime treat. <laughs> that's when I sit down to the couch. It's like I don't eat it's so disgusting. I don't eat all day. And then I just eat candy at night. Yeah. It's really bad. I'm gonna do something about that eventually. Uh, but cares? not today. No. Uh, you know but yeah, yeah, we used to incorporate, we used to be like, tonight's just fruit or popcorn. I heard this woman who was like 100 years old tell this story. You can probably find it online. She's like 100 years old. And she said that four different doctors had told her to stop drinking Dr. Pepper. Mm. And she outlived all of them. And she probably- And she still yeah, drinks a Dr. She Pepper just, she, she went to the fifth doctor. Yep. Dr. Who, yeah. Pepper. Dr. Pepper. <laughs> okay. What do you got over there? Okay, so let's catch up. Let's catch up on our lives because Hi. you, Shane, were recently honored as an American current CMHOF for shocked. I have no idea what that means. I would well, love to know more. CMHOF is the Country Music Hall of Fame. Oh my God. Yes. So they put that's uh, a big deal. Yeah, it is. It was. Wow. And it, it was a lot of fun. And uh, so shocked has a, um, what, what do you call it, an exhibit? Yeah. With oh, like, really? Uh, you know, with some of the costumes, stories of how the the songs were written, and um, it's very, very cool. It was so nice for Nashville to acknowledge 
the this show that you know was on Broadway, but clearly inspired by the years I spent working in Nashville with Brandy Clark. And yeah, so very, very fun. And congratulations to you, you and saw Brandy. The show. Yes, thank you. Yeah, please tell her I said congratulations. Cool. A big deal. I mean, I cannot believe how much success this show has. Did you think when you were writing in all those years that it was gonna be this successful, like make it all the way to Broadway? I think if we had known what it really takes, I would never have believed it. The truth is we were delusional. We were naive. That is what it takes in a lot of uh, entertainment fields, probably in any field. If you know too much, you will talk yourself out of success. Mm -hmm. It's like you just have to believe. Why not? But I think that that is such a good mantra for everything that you approach in life, right? Because it is so true. It's like, if you don't believe it, right. how is anyone else going to believe it? And if you know too much, I agree with you. It's scary. It's, it is. It's, and you're it's, like, yeah. because the odds are not in your favor. No. But the truth is the universe is. And some people break through. That Exactly. Yeah. So why not us? Yeah. Why not us? Yeah. That is the way, that is such a good mentality. And I mean, your life is proof of that, right? It is. Yours is too. Hard work and willing it and believing it. Uh, for sure. I mean, I, I don't, you know. Mine's more, mine is more pure universe. But Things drop. But guess now what? I'm going after things more. Now but like you, the real estate is more hustle work to me. The hustle work though, and we've discussed this before and it's hard to explain to people. The hustle work is so that you don't talk yourself out of the dream. You don't have to do the hustle work. That's for mm. your own brain. That's for your own feeling. I, I am a hustler too. Mm -hmm. I enjoy the hustle. Mm -hmm. But for people who don't, but believe those things still come to them, they will. Yeah. It, the hustle is to occupy that self-saboteur. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like better things happen for me when I'm busy. But that's so because I true. don't sit and watch it. That's what they say. They say productivity comes out of busyness. Yeah. yeah. But, I, but again, I believe that you would get the same results from being still. I do. I just don't think that I believe the busyness is to, is, is to keep you sane, mm. if that makes sense. Yeah. Because, you know, I've really come to understand that if you were to sit on the couch all day, but you believed that would equal a big career. Mm -hmm. If you believed in your whole heart and soul that sitting there would get it done, it would. I'm just going to do that from now on. But you I say mean. that. See, that's what I used to say when people <laughs> would tell me this or when I would hear it in a manifesting podcast, I'd be like, well, then I'm just going to lay in bed. I tried that. Yeah. It's not, it's not the fact that, oh, let me say. It's, it's not like a physical laying in bed. It's like a mental. It's just that I want to do something. Yeah, if you want and it, and if it's not, it'll even find if find a not, way to find you, right? Yeah, even if it's not re directly related to the dream, yeah, just do it if it makes you feel better. Yeah, and that's what I finally realized was I'm just not prone to or drawn to laying around the house. I'm trying not to have judgment around anyone who wants to do that because so be it. Do your yeah. thing, and if you believe that that's your best path, that's how the universe built you. I don't know how I'll feel if my kids are those kind of people. You know, if they're like adults that just want to chill, I would like to think that I have the same, that I have the same grace mm -hmm. for them because I grew up in a house where you worked. Mm -hmm. Me too. Uh, but I also grew up in a house where work was obsessive. And I've lived that way for a long time. And now I'm trying to realize that the work is not what brought me success. It was the belief that I could do it. Yeah. And, and then the work again kept my mind busy. Yeah. So I didn't obsess on what I didn't have because That's that is what being still does to me. Idling brings me too much chaos and anxiety. Exactly. That's what it is. I don't like to you idle. You got to have something to occupy that brain. Yeah. While the good stuff simmers. And if you focus on the light and the positive and like what you want and what you believe you can have, then I always you'll joke find too it. anytime that I go on a trip. Or if we're, I don't know, playing pickleball for two hours, something that keeps me especially busy and out of it, I'll pick up my phone and some news I've been waiting on always comes through. Mm. It's because I've taken my eye off the water and then it can boil. Yeah. I really believe that is a, is a metaphor Watch pot for it. never boils. Right. 
And just yeah. sitting and looking at a problem will never bring you the solution. But you got to put the water in it. That's right. And then walk away. It's you know, it's like my son. He when he plays basketball, if he takes a shot early in the game and misses, he's super timid to take another shot. Mm. And I'm like, you're never going. It's so cliche, but it's the best way to say it. You're never going to make a shot you don't take. Right. And it's a numbers game, man. Yeah, you got to take exactly. a lot of shots until one goes okay. in. It just is Life what it is. is. Yeah. Like the whole game, you should just be shooting. That's right. That's life. That's that metaphor. You, life. And then you take the shots. And then you put it in the basket and the water boils. hundred. As the basketball goes in. That's right. Amen. Life, baby. Amen. Welcome Hallelujah. to life. What do we have? Right. Do we have? <laughs> we digressed a little bit. Let's talk about a couple other things. You know what? Actually, I really just want to dive in today to our to our main meat of our topic because today we're going to talk a little bit about like relationships and specifically things that annoy us about our partners. We're talking relationship pet peeves, oh. and then we're going to do a little bit of help. We had a couple callers, um, callers. Call, Ooh, what are we oh, like I a late night callers. radio show? Caller, you're on with Dial Gina and Shane. In. Hello, what's your problem? How can we help you? Mantra and Orange Country. This is Gina. This is the universe speaking. How may we assist you? Um, but yeah, then we're gonna dive into a few people have some relationship issues that hopefully we can help them with. But oh. first, I was curious, I want to know what are your pet peeves with Michael? Oh, I mean, look, I'm, I want to know if they're norm, like if we all have the same shit or if different people have different things. Well, he started doing this thing recently that is really I mean, and I is take it, it him or is it your pet peeve? Well, I take it very personally. Yeah. So first of all, let me just preface with, and, and he would agree husband. with this. I do love him, <laughs> but I was going to preface with, I live with the loudest three humans oh. on the face of the earth. I, the noise level in my house. But what I found is comparatively, when we go to restaurants or we're with other people's kids, my kids are not loud. Huh. It's, I have a sensitivity to noise. So do I. And, and so- it feels like the older I get, the more sensitive I get and the louder they get. Mm -hmm. And um, with that said, Michael is a very loud talker. We had a huge fight last night. We were watching oh. a show and he started to tell me a story. So I paused it. And as he's talking, we're in our bedroom alone and this voice is reverberating off the walls. <laughs> I'm just like, do you realize you're yelling? Mm -hmm. And of course that was it. I mean, we... I can't say it in a kind mm. way like, hey, babe, I'm not sure you know how loud you're talking, but the neighbor's dog is barking. You know what? I That's so funny because I, when I get all worked up, especially when like I'm talking about something that happened, like housewife stuff or whatever, and I get very worked up and I, it'll be like late at night and me and Travis will be in bed and we'll be like five centimeters from each other. And I am like just blasting like so loud and he does it just like that. So maybe you should do it like that because he'll just well, be Travis like, is a nice person. And also, <laughs> you know, he come, He has a good family. He's from a good background. Okay. Oh, yeah. This is your mom's problem. Yeah. This is you were going to break. No, but my I, mom. Don't, my, I don't ever remember my mom being overly annoyed by, by my noise, by how loud I was. It, I just sometimes, and the TV's always turned Doesn't up it hurt really your brain? loud. Sometimes Travis does this one cough. It offends me. It's like, <gasps> Like it's this cough yes, yes. and I know it's from COVID. So I feel bad because it's like, you're one of those people that's just like never going to be the same after yeah. COVID. But when he does it, it literally sends this like ping to my brain. Me too. And, and I cannot take it. I know what, exactly what you're talking about. Michael's is a yawn uh, that is so oh. loud because he goes, oh, <laughs> and, it, and he never knows he's doing it. No, they don't. And know. I go- there's that yawn, just so you'll know. Because like what happens is I'll bring it up when he's not doing it. And he'll be like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Then he'll do it. And I'll go, that's the yawn. And he'll go, oh, was it? And I'll be like, yes. Yes. He also does it in his sleep. Oh, man. You and have to suffocate him. I'm telling he's gotta you, He's got to go. Gina, you can't live like that. so loud. It's as loud as what I just did. Well, and does he snore? Travis is a snorer. He does when he's he's not. He's he's in He's lost weight. He he fluctuates. Mm -hmm. He's at a weight now where he doesn't snore. Actually, you know what? Because trap that was like killing me. Because he every time I have a hard time falling asleep, and then right when I be about to fall oh, asleep, oh, I will he record be, him and play it for him in the morning. But now lately, he did. Travis lost some weight, and now yeah. he hasn't been snoring. He says that I've been talking in my sleep. I always talk in my sleep, and I sleepwalk. I, I do used really to. Weird I used shit. to when I was younger. I used to ha talk in my sleep a lot. My mother's a sleep talker and walker, mm -hmm. but 
he said last night, but he said it this morning sort of accusingly. Like he was like, you are really loud. Like, what are you dreaming about? Like, you're like, like making a lot of noise. And I don't mean accusing me of like having an affair in my dream. I mean <laughs> that, that he's saying it almost like he doesn't believe. Like he's like, it was so loud. Like, were you sleeping? Like you were doing it on purpose. And I'm like, like you were secretly awake. I cannot believe you of all people are going to. You have the audacity. When you yawn and cough all night long. <sighs> you do all these Among things. other things that I'm not going to embarrass him. Um, well, he's on the he's on the offensive now because he's no longer snoring. Maybe so he's like, now I can stick it to you. I, I maybe. I mean, I'm just telling you. Is it the farting in the sleep? Is that what it I'm is? Not, is I that can't. what we're? Is it? Does he? Is I'll it just tell you. Fart? I have at times thought that we were being attacked. I mean, I've said that. I have woke <laughs> up and said somebody's in the house and, and there and a bomb has gone off. And you know, his last name is Bomb. So it's too perfect. <laughs> It's too oh God, perfect. he is gonna kill me! Oh my God, I know. I'm really glad that they're not here to defend. Themselves. I was actually thinking that'd be a fun episode with both of them. I know, but I'm happy they're Except not here. Michael's microphone will be. It, it'll it'll do that thing where it. We'll have to silence it. He, what's funny though? We'll is keep he, it three feet away from him. When it's just like if it was you, I mean, he's not gonna be screaming in your face. But I mean, it just annoys you because like you love him. <sighs> Seventeen years. So long. It's such a long time. It's, it's a, no, a, I don't think it's an normal. almost voting age child. Like it's I don't a think grown it's normal person. For, for people to spend this much time together and, and not be annoyed. No, because everything is annoying. I annoy myself. I and Travis is definitely annoyed by me because my own shit. I annoy myself. Like so, I know it's annoying other people. I don't annoy myself. I'm bored with me, but I'm not annoyed. You're bored with yourself. I'm just bored. Like I don't. I'm like, I'm too it's much. It's just like birthdays and self. all this stuff. People are always like, what are you going to do for your Oh, birthday? I hate that. I I'm hate like, we, I'm turning 40 like this year, I'm turning by the way. 50. Oh. I know, but we're not talking about that today because we, we have time for that. But Wait, when is your birthday again? We October. Have to have a, okay, we're going to have to have like a-, a, a Funeral? Decade. Um, yeah, we'll have a birthday party for me. Yours is a total funeral. Mine's going to be one of those like- We'll put you out to pasture. Stands. I just thought of something funny about being in a relationship for a long time. You know how you'll see couples- across a restaurant that are just old and they're just sitting there eating in silence. Mm -hmm. And I used to look at that and be like, how sad. I never want to be that way. Now I pray for the day that I sit at a dinner with my husband and he says nothing. <laughs> but you still show up. Oh, I There's mean, the I'm silver keep lining. My sister says you got what you got. Yeah. <laughs> you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Exactly. That's what I tell my children and every day. I do love him and I... Certainly, I'm a I'm an easily annoyed person. That's the thing too. Yeah. I have a hair trigger. I expect everybody to be perfect and just cater to like what I like and, and but don't what I like. think is perfect. Yeah, it's like he can wear a shirt that I'm I am positive he put on to piss me off, <laughs> and he reminds me constantly I'm not thinking of upsetting you when I get dressed. Oh my god, poor Michael. My okay. kids too. I mean, I'm. I'm like, this morning I was like going through her clothes going, you never wear any of these clothes that I bought you. And- Because they want comfortable clothes. You know what, Nicholas, yeah. rem like Nicholas is very similar in the way that he wants all the cool stuff if we go shopping but and he's he, really into it yeah. like at the store and he wants it and he does want it for eventually that day that never comes that he wants to wear it. But then he really just wants to be in like athletic shorts and a t-shirt, yeah. you know? So it, I understand that. But I still think like what I take away from that though is- it's still like exciting for them in the moment. If we go shopping, they're still super fun. So maybe it's more just about like those memories. I think and like, you're right. You know and, I need I mean? to, and I need to be okay with it just being that because what happens is- Or just don't take go, her to rest at nice stores. Now he yeah. won't, he does not want, he wants to wear the exact same shirt and the exact same shorts every single day and huh. does not care. And I'm like, don't you think people notice? That's my daughter. He does not care. Sienna. Really? Yeah, most of, funny? like she's okay now because we found like- this one pair of like ripped jeans that she loves. And I just had to buy like 17 pairs of them on Amazon. So like the kids at school might think she's wearing the same pants every day, but, but I'm like, they're clean. It's fine. And then I got one with like a star on it. They look a little different and like a hoodie, like every day. She is not about, she has her own style, but she is not about like being yeah. groomed and no. refined. And it's just not her jam. They are who they are. I know. They kind are. of easier. I guess. It is easier. It's just it it you really have to give up at the age that our kids are getting to. 
I have to give up control. Or I gave up a long time ago. It's really I'm not a control me. person though. See? I'm not a control right, person. Right. So it's not hard for me. It's it's that I'll, part is easy. I really want to decide and I want to like but also I get frustrated if they ask me too many times. It's like I want you to ask me what to wear but then I'm I'm annoyed. Yeah. You know. You just want them to instinctually do it the way you would do it. There it is. And then make That's you it. proud. I have the same instinct, same Look, opinion. Look, I've turned into Shane. Yeah. What do you, what does Travis do? So many things. bothers you. Well, first of all, okay, Travis, he beatboxes. Oh my God. And he doesn't even know he's doing it. See, that's the thing is when they don't know and they're it's doing it. loud. Yes. And he raps constantly and th it's like the same rap songs and like beatboxing that I've heard for now five years. Yeah, yeah. It's not like he changes, you know, he doesn't throw any new totally. content in there. It's like the same thing. Uh, he takes the longest showers. Like, what are you doing in there, yeah, man? People, my kids take really long showers. I find that to be so annoying. Like, because we're just like, we'll get ready to like do watch a movie and he'll be like, okay, just got to take a shower really quick. And I'm like, it's really not quick? really quick. I like what? Yeah. That like very much. I feel like, well, you know me. what bothers me? What? I love that. I asked you about Travis. Now I'm like, let me tell you more about Michael. <laughs> I know. I was like, wow, a good thing I got that out. <laughs> Back to my, <laughs> I, but, I, but I think the reason I'm saying this is because you're reminding me of things I get annoyed that his behavior, if we broke up, he would not do any of these things for whoever was next. That's mm. what I get mad about. Like, give me an example. I'm saying like, he does not care um, half the time if like, he, what am I trying to say? He's loud for one. He he sings, not well. The sa he tells the same jokes. He's also super inappropriate. Oh, he's so you think that if he was dating somebody else, all of a sudden he would be like well mannered, super appropriate, like not like volume levels in check. Yes, over the top. Because this is what I always think. I always think if someone else came along, say we broke up, and someone else, or I died, and someone else came along, they wouldn't stay with this level. Mm. So he would have to adjust. Or maybe, do you think, what can you do? No, I don't even know how to finish that. <laughs> I tried, Michael. No, I'm, I'm the prize. <laughs> there will be none of that. You none what, of that. You know what's super annoying? He has no, he has, he loves doing family tree. Uh, so I've told you this before, right? Where he yes, he the does lineage these family, stuff. Yes, yes, but he's obsessed with it. Yeah, he does it all hours. He, I mm. mean, I wake up in the middle of the night, and you know, most people would be afraid that their partner was on the phone or having mm. a secret conversation. No, he's finding out who his fourteenth cousin was, <clears throat> who came over on the Mayflower. I'm just like, <laughs> I historical cannot buff. hear about this anymore. Mm. And he doesn't. I will say he doesn't even attempt to tell me about it anymore because the my eyes roll so far back in my head. Yeah, when I'm like, oh, where were you? And that's always pleasant to like share things you're excited about. I know when, that yeah. now that part I would say if he met someone else, I think in the beginning that person would fake that they were interested in that, and totally. that would be sweet. Hundred percent. He could have that for a minute. So your biggest pet peeve is that Michael just, he cares too much. God, you're right. Mm. Oh. Just kind of chew on that for a minute. covered that ground. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess that's all there is to say. And if Travis could stop beatboxing. The beatboxing, great. I would be so annoyed. It is so annoying. Yeah. And I feel like people, is that like a normal thing like people do? No. Like also, you know, kind of interesting that he has that talent, that like secret talent. Right. And he's not gonna like take it on the road or anything, but like I it's, mean, it's, it's But see, impressive. to me, if he took it on the road, he I would be less it. annoyed. It's like the family right. tree thing. I wouldn't be so oh, annoyed if oh, that was his job. Oh, I have a huge one. He will not dance. At weddings or and in public, yeah. But he never stops dancing at home. 
So I don't get it. It's like a thing that, and his family, everybody knows that Travis doesn't dance, Travis doesn't dance. And I'm like, but that is so absurd because we're at a wedding now and I want to dance, but I don't want to dance without my partner right. and he will not. So now I have become a non-dancing oh. wedding guest. Yes. And that is makes me sad because I think it's fun to dance with your partner and he will never, <laughs> doing all this funny dances at home. And you're like, where are and you? And I'm like, bust out all that shit. You have have some good stuff in there. Well, he, and he really, you can't, you know, that is where Michael should be your wedding date. Ah, uh, He's no, a good dancer. I bet he's a great wedding date. He's a legitimate dancer, but he also has gotten to where he doesn't do it as much. Um, he also does this other thing where he grabs your butt. He wouldn't grab yours. I mean, he mm. might after a month if you mm. live with him. He grabs our kids' butts. He grabs my butt. And it's hard. Mm. It, it's like, I know that sounds sweet, but it's like, it really hurts. Yeah, Travis has like very strong fingers. And so when yeah. he tickles the kids and stuff, it yes. actually like hurts them. But uh, like he doesn't understand that he has this like sometimes. freakish grip. Yeah. Yes, yeah, like they do. They just have strong digits. And then I don't know what that is. And forearms, very strong forearms. Yeah, strong hands, strong hands. Another thing that, that I think he does that annoys me. <laughs> Really uh, it's open now. I really need to get this out, guys. It's I really on, need to get this now. out. Um, but he is like a very regimented eater. Oh. So it is breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay. And no snacks. But it's oh. annoying because if it's like Boy, like that's... literally yesterday, right? So we're in the car on our way to Huntington Beach. We had a listing appointment. So we went out there, you know, and it was a weird time. And so now it's we're getting out there and the meeting was starting at 4.30. We we're supposed to be there. And that's like, and he didn't eat lunch because mm -hmm. we had other stuff going on. So now we're talking, he's going since like eight in the morning from breakfast and he does not miss meals. So he missed lunch. It's 4.30. And I'm like, could we just like roll through a Starbucks? Just a, how about you have a egg, an, a hard boiled egg? Yeah. Have a have a cheese stick. Banana Can you have a little bread. banana? Or yeah, a little banana bread. No. Why not? Why won't you? I? He goes, because I do not like that. And I'm like, who does not like that? Like, it's a snacky snack. Like, you need it. You know what you sound like? A person who needs a fucking snack. That's what you sound like right now. And he will not oh, do that it. really went over, I bet. And then, yeah. And then I'm just, you know what? I don't even, I've learned to just say, you know what? You're a grown man and you've done this to yourself. So. I l we're going to wrap this up, but I absolutely love that Travis said, I do not like that. He said, I do not like that. That happened recently when I was on an airplane that my flight, I was in economy. And mm, good for you. You know what? I do not like that. Wow. And you do. Period. <laughs> That's it. And that was, I explained it a million different and that's ways. That's the end of that. That I was tired and mm -hmm. that all these things, the truth is, I do, I not, do not like, like that. that. And I, why were you in economy? Were they sold out of first class? It was a we. It was a mistake. It was a mistake. That, Clearly. And uh, yeah, we had a huge fight about it, my husband and I, oh. because he doesn't care. He's just like, oh, we're in, in economy, but he knows yeah, I do not like that. You that. do not like that. <gasps> I think right. that's a new segment. I do not like that. We'll we'll get into it. Things later. we do not like. But we do love our partners. So we do love our partners. Let's see if we can help other people with their relationships. Wait, now it is thirty minutes. By by the way, right, what, we're what do time one. is it? My husband and I have been married for about a year. His mom, my mother in law, has always been very involved, too involved, and a little overbearing. She also has a way of really crossing boundaries. For example, we returned home from our honeymoon, and she had let herself in while we were gone, and had a welcome home. <laughs> flower arrangement waiting for us in the kitchen. I felt extremely uncomfortable that she was in the house while we weren't there and mm. didn't tell us about it. My husband didn't have an issue and thought that this was a sweet gesture. We just recently found out we are pregnant and I'm afraid my mother-in-law is going to get worse. I don't want to put my husband in the middle of this, so I thought about addressing it directly with her. However, I don't want to be disrespectful and I also kind of want my husband to stick up for me. Any advice on how you would handle? Oof, girl, that's I, a tricky one. I don't know that. I don't know that her coming in the house and setting up a welcome home—that's not that. I, my mother-in-law or or my mother and and they could be in our house when we weren't there. 
I think it's very sweet. Like I understand it's an H gesture in the mom, but I think the perspective of this girl is like, okay, I was just on my honeymoon with my husband. That's true. We've been banging it out all week, celebrating like our new love, our moment, yeah. our marriage. And, then you, come and then you come through the door and you walk through that threshold, honey, I'm home to your new home. And your freaking mother-in-law is there, you know? Yeah, and I think that's true. And if you're not super comfortable already with her and feeling already like she's a bit overbearing, I can understand how now everything you're looking at yeah. is weird and uncomfortable. But I think that I personally think addressing it with directly with your mother-in-law is a huge mistake because you first of all, it's just gonna become then a thing between you and her, and you need to stay united with your husband. Yeah. That's how I feel. I think you need to explain in a very you need to think about what you want out of the situation and you want your husband to see your perspective. So you cannot make this a thing that this is something that you can't make your husband pick between his mother and his wife because no. that never goes well. You need to get him to understand that you guys are a team and this isn't nothing against her. This is to set appropriate boundaries so that you are fostering a good relationship as you go into the future with this baby and this marriage. You don't want problems. And that's why you need to address this up front. Make sure everybody's comfortable and you want to be respectful of your mother-in-law, which is why you're going to your husband. Like, that's how I would approach it. Yeah. Like, it's about wanting to respect her, but wanting to define clear boundaries for yourself. In-laws are just, it's, it's so And then she may not respect touchy. any of that. And she no, might, you know, also, she's going to be in that delivery room. Let's face it. Well, it's a very... <laughs> She's delivering that baby. Uh, we all know it. I love that. I, <laughs> when she said that, I'm just afraid yep. she's going to be in the delivery room. Oh, she's, she's in there. I mean, I think we also just- She's like, there's the placenta. It's also different <laughs> men's mothers. I mean, there's something about a mom and a son. Especially where I grew up, and Long Island moms yeah, are. Yeah. I mean, yes. Oh, we can get into that. We could get into so much and more. But that would be my advice. Would be, you definitely want to be on the same page as your husband- and I think you want your husband to do it, but you need to know exactly what he's saying. I don't know. You guys are probably going to get divorced. I was I about mean. to say it's over. <laughs> <laughs> we actually are clearly wonderful at giving advice. I wish we could do more of those, but- I know. We've, we've, we will, uh, though. That was fun. We'll we do it another day. We should do an day. episode where we just do just relationship do those. advice. I know. It's so Because funny. we clearly uh, are experts in that field after 100%. hearing this episode, you know. And everything that we hate about our partners. No big deal. Yeah, exactly. All Travis right. skipped this one. Love you. <laughs> <laughs>